These are the answers to the practice quiz on mole conversions. In number one, we have to fill in each blank with the appropriate number. And this number could be Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, or the number could be based on information from the periodic table. Part A, one mole of lithium has a mass of how many grams? If we want to find the mass of one mole of a substance, then we use the periodic table and the atomic mass. So on the periodic table, lithium has an atomic mass of 6.94. So therefore, one mole of lithium has a mass of 6.94 grams. In part B, it asks how many atoms there are in one mole of lithium. If we want to find out the number of particles in one mole of a substance, we use Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole of lithium. In part C, we know that oxygen has an atomic mass of 16, but they want the number of grams in one mole of oxygen gas, which is diatomic, that's O2, so it's not 16, but rather 16 times 2. There are 32 grams in one mole of oxygen. And then finally, how many molecules of oxygen are in one mole? Now is the time for Avogadro's number. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of oxygen in one mole. Number two is a multiple choice question that says which of the following shows the correct setup for converting 5.1 grams of copper into moles. Now this question starts with units of grams of copper. In order to set up a conversion factor in which we can cancel out the units of grams of copper, grams of copper should go on the bottom in the conversion factor. So since in choices A and C, the units on the bottom are moles, we can already eliminate those choices. Although choice B and D both have grams of copper on the bottom, we know that based on the periodic table, one mole of copper is equal to 63.55 grams. So in choice B, it says one gram of copper is equal to 63.55 moles. And since that's incorrect, we can eliminate choice B and the correct answer is D. Number three is also a multiple choice question, and we are starting with 5.67 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of copper. And in two steps, we have to convert this into grams of copper. So based on the first step, using Avogadro's number, we know that there are 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles in one mole. In this case, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms in one mole. So if you look at choices C and D, it says that one atom of copper equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd moles. So that's wrong. We can eliminate choices C and D. Moving on to the second step, we know from the periodic table that there are 63.55 grams in one mole of copper. And since choice A says one gram of copper equals 63.55 moles, that's backwards, that's incorrect. We can eliminate choice A, and the correct answer is B. Number four is a multiple choice question. Which of the following represents the mass of one mole of hydrogen sulfide, which has the formula H2S. Since we are dealing with mass, we don't need Avogadro's number. We need to look at the periodic table. Hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1.008, and sulfur has an atomic mass of 32.06. There are two hydrogens in the formula, so we multiply this mass by two, and there's one sulfur. Adding these numbers together, we get 34.076. That's how many grams there are in one mole of hydrogen sulfide. So the correct answer is C. 
Number five is a multiple choice question, but they are not talking about mass. They are talking about the number of atoms in one mole of carbon. And we already know that for the number of particles in one mole, we use Avogadro's number. So the correct answer to number five is D. Number six, each of the following conversion problems requires one step. Write a conversion factor that is clearly labeled with the numbers and the units. Make sure your final answer has units. And then make sure you have rounded off the number to the appropriate number of significant figures. We start in part A with five grams of butane, which has the formula C4H10. We draw the line for our conversion factor. Focusing on the units, let's put grams of butane on the bottom so that we can cancel out those units. And since we are converting into moles of butane, let's put moles of butane on the top. Now, because we're dealing with mass, the number of grams in one mole, this involves the periodic table. Carbon has an atomic mass of 12.01 and hydrogen 1.008. The formula butane, C4H10, has four carbons, so we multiply the atomic mass of carbon times four, and ten hydrogens, so we multiply the atomic mass of hydrogen by ten. The total is 58.12. That means that there are 58.12 grams of butane for every one mole. So in this conversion factor, we put a one on the top, next to moles, and we put 58.12 next to grams on the bottom. Now that we have set up our conversion factor correctly, we need to do the math and then round off the final answer to the proper number of significant figures. So we're going to pick up our calculator and do 5 divided by 58.12. Of course, on our calculator we get a long number which has many more extra significant figures. Let's take a look at 5.00 grams, which is the given value that we started with. Since that number has three significant figures, our answer should be rounded off to three significant figures. The leading zeros do not count, so our first significant figure begins with the 8, and then the 6, and then the final zero would be significant. So our answer should be written as 0 0.0860 moles of butane. In part B, we are starting with 17.5 moles of water, and we are converting this into units of molecules. So we'll draw our line for the conversion factor. We're going to put units of moles on the bottom so it will cancel out, and we're going to convert into molecules. Let's put molecules on the top. This is not going to involve the periodic table. This will involve Avogadro's number. So we know that every mole of water contains 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Let's put a 1 on the bottom next to moles, and let's put Avogadro's number on the top next to molecules. Again, now that we've set up our conversion factor correctly, we have to do the math and then round off our answer to the proper number of significant figures. So we pick up our calculator, and do 17.5 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and our calculator gives us 1.0535 times 10 to the 25th power. The given number has three significant figures. That's what we started with. So our answer should be rounded off to three significant figures, and so we write 1.05 times 10 to the 25th molecules of water. In number seven, each of the following conversion problems involves two steps, because we're going to start with grams of carbon dioxide, and we have to get all the way to molecules. This will be two steps. Let's be very clear with our units to set this problem up. 2.67 grams of carbon dioxide. In our first conversion factor, we're going to put grams of carbon dioxide on the bottom. And as we convert from grams to moles, we'll put moles of carbon dioxide on the top. In our second step, 
we're going to put moles of carbon dioxide on the bottom and finish off the problem with molecules. So molecules of carbon dioxide on the top. So now that we have set up our units correctly, let's talk about the numbers. The mass of one mole comes from information off the periodic table. And so in this case, carbon dioxide has one carbon, and that mass is 12.01, and two oxygens, that's 16 times 2, so 32. The total is 44.01. So that means that one mole of carbon dioxide has a mass of 44.01 grams. We put a 1 on the top next to moles, and we put 44.01 on the bottom next to grams. In our second step, that involves Avogadro's number. So we put a 1 on the bottom next to moles and Avogadro's number on the top next to molecules. So we have set up our two conversion factors correctly. Now let's pick up our calculator and do the math. Then we can round off our final answer to the proper number of significant figures. The math here involves 2.67 divided by 44.01 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Our calculator gives us an answer of 3.652215 times 10 to the 23rd. Our given answer should have the same number of significant figures as what we started with. And since we began with 2.67, which has three sig figs, our answer should be rounded off to three sig figs. So we write 3.65 times 10 to the 23rd molecules for our answer. Part B of number 7 also involves two steps. We begin with 4.25 times 10 to the 24th molecules of bromine, Br2. And our first step involves the conversion from molecules to moles. So the units of molecules of Br2 should go on the bottom, moles of Br2 on the top. In our second step, we're going to convert from moles of Br2 into grams of Br2. So moles on the bottom and grams on top. Now let's fill in the numbers correctly. So in our first step, how many molecules are in one mole? That's Avogadro's number again. So here we have one on the top next to moles and Avogadro's number on the bottom next to molecules. In our second step, this involves the periodic table. And we discover that bromine has an atomic mass of 79.90, but the formula is Br2. We multiply by 2. That's 159.80. That's how many grams are in one mole. So we put a 1 on the bottom next to moles and 159.80 on the top next to grams. We have successfully set up our conversion factors. Let's pick up our calculator and do the math, which is 4.25 times 10 to the 24th divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd and then times 159.80. The answer we get on our calculator is 1128.156. Since the number we started with has three sig figs, our answer should be rounded off to three significant figures. We can do this in one of two ways, and either way is correct. We can write this with no decimal, round it off to three sig figs as 1130, so 1130 with no decimal. That final zero is not significant because a decimal is absent. Or we can write this in scientific notation as 1.13 times 10 to the third grams. Either one is acceptable. All right, that should be the end of our practice quiz. I hope that these answers and explanations were helpful. Good luck studying. Thanks for watching.